Welcome. Today I'm going to be reviewing and building the Raiden RD6012 power supply. So sit tight and let's dig in. Now let's see what we got. Okay. Well, here's our ground wire. Not really sure where they're intending for me to connect the ground strap. Uh, we've got blue and brown. One of those is going to be intended for live and the other neutral. Uh, this actually identifies live over here on the left and then neutral on the right from the back. So that's easy enough. I just noticed on the side here, uh, there's actually a 220 slash 110 switch or it says 230 on the switch. Really, it should be 240 volts and 120 is what nominal is for uh, American AC voltages. So I've switched that over to 115 and it kind of gives you a demonstration, right? It says 115 or 230 here versus 110 or 220 here. I mean, nominal normal voltage is 120 volts or 240 volts, depending on uh, what type of circuit you're using here in the US. There are other voltages available too, depending on if you have a three phase system, you might have 120 volts single phase or 120 per phase voltage with uh, 208 volts phase to phase voltage if you have a three phase system. So in that case, if you're running a high power 240 volt device, you're gonna wanna get a transformer most likely, unless it's a computer power supply or one that actually has active PFC inside of it, which can compensate and run in a large range of voltages. This cannot, so that already indicates to me that they may have skipped out on having active power factor correction on the input stage of this. Even if they have it, um, it must not be a boost converter type. Otherwise it should be able to run, you know, hundred to 250 volts without needing to switch here. So something to be aware of. And it is a relatively inexpensive power supply. Um, I might try to do some analysis on how much noise it generates on the input line. Hopefully it's not that bad. It doesn't feel real heavy, so it's still probably got a forward converter uh, topology in here uh, for the power output, but possibly no active power factor correction. Um, I may or may not open it up if there's some interest in that. I can open up this power supply and we can go through a little analysis of that, see what type of circuitry it's using. But otherwise, I'm just going to install this here and call it a day. I mean, they mentioned a warranty and void if removed. Who knows if I could even get warranty service for this. The power supply itself, I mean, probably 60 to 80 bucks. This really wasn't an expensive device. It's a really good price for what it is as long as it works and it's relatively safe. So I'm gonna go double check what the standard color code is for brown and blue for live versus neutral, and I'll be right back. All right, so it turns out the uh, color coding for this is to have neutral as blue. I doubt it says it on the side. Uh, if it did, I was gonna feel silly. I'm gonna pop this out of here, and you can see we've got our live and neutral. So I'm gonna hook blue up to this, or ah, what did I just say it was? Blue is neutral. So I'll hook blue up to neutral, brown up to live. And our ground wire, which is the yellow and green wire, up to the ground. Now, these are not instructions on how to do this. I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm doing it right, but I'm also an idiot. And uh, if you're gonna do this, you need to be familiar with this beforehand and not rely on me to keep you from uh, getting hurt setting up this power supply. So, ground is our third one here. There we go. Seems like I never have the right size Phillips screwdriver. I do have a set I could go get, but who wants to walk and grab that? Is that even gonna reach to the back? Yeah, yeah, barely. But they'll make it. You're also going to want to have this whole power supply buttoned up before you uh, power up anything just so that there's no risk of you touching any of these exposed leads. But it looks like we've only got two common wires to connect and two positive wires. So I'm not, I'm, I doubt these are three different voltage rails. I think they're all one. It's not like a computer power supply that has uh, three rails for the power. I don't know what the hell this brown wire is for. There 
I'm if there were was an instruction card, I'd guess I lobbed it. Hey. No, that just tells me the components that are included in the power supply. All right. Oh, power connects up here. So you have in plus are these two, I'm assuming, and in minus are the other two. And plus is on the left. So these are just screw terminals. And, well, <laughs> you're going to want to have this through here, or you can uh, install your wires in here first and put it back. And that's probably what I should have done. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do now. Take these four off, install them on here. And that way I can test this part of the power supply before I ever power this on. And then these aren't attached. These wires are not attached to a hot 70 volt output. So I'm going to undo some of my work here and take care of that. All right. Those are in. Uh, the next step, I got the power input here. That's probably going to take... Uh, a couple of the countersunk screws. I'm gonna put it in this way, I suppose. So, blue is our neutral. So that one will go on the bottom, given the way that I've oriented the plug. Neutral, or ground rather, goes in between. And live will go at the top there. We're missing something. Uh, I did not install the power switch. These should not go directly on your plug, otherwise you've got no on-off switch. So that goes on the back. Do I really care what direction this is? Not really, I guess. All right, so I'm gonna drop my live up here, put on the brown jumper cable, and then I'm gonna jumper that over to the outlet. All right. Now we've got a power switch. This case doesn't feel real solid. I feel like I ought to be wearing safety glasses. What if it blows up in my face? Ooh. I can hear that high pitched noise. 70.3 volts. You know, I don't think that's gonna blow up the supply. I really, really don't. Did I just switch it off and it's still running the fan? Jeez. <laughs> that was delayed. I don't think I'm gonna worry about a 0.3 uh, voltage difference. For all I know, my multimeter is off by 0.3. So I'm not even gonna try and adjust it. Okay, looks like we've got our power hooked up. We've got our load resistor to apparently reduce the uh, high pitch screech of this whole system. Case is out of square a little bit. But I managed to jam everything in there. Uh, one other thing I'd have liked to see on here, instead of these uh, types of banana connectors, I would have liked to see safety banana jacks like you see on a lot of uh, more expensive equipment. And uh, I don't know if there's like a patent on banana jacks or something. They're always very, very expensive, always totally overpriced. I've taken to liking to use uh, safety banana jacks. I've shorted things out now and again. I mean, not all the time, but a lot of times you'll end up with dangling exposed wires and that's just an extra obstacle and problem that you have to deal with. So I'd like to see uh, safety banana jacks on something like this. But again, for the price, it's not that bad. If you want, you can try changing them out or you can just use an adapter. Not that big of a deal. So I think it's time to plug this thing in and turn this baby on. Time to switch the power on. You know, I'm thinking it's kind of weird. It's got a power switch here because I don't think it can switch the power on without the switch on the back. So I'm not really sure how this is supposed to work independently. Power's on, okay. Okay, so the front supply has a separate switch from the back. Uh, that's another, again, you know, for the price, whatever, but these power switches should be coordinated but instead you've got to switch that rear supply off separately or it's always going to be on, the fan's always going to be on. Uh, your output on off then is going to be here. Then you've got over voltage protection and over current protection. But I think if you set a current limit function here on your I set, so 4.99 volts on the output, near enough right. Not that my multimeter is calibrated, it surely isn't, but let's see what we got when we turn it on. Drop this in here. 
4.992. Hey, close enough. This middle port is not a ground port to the best of my knowledge. It actually has a battery symbol in there and it tells you that it's the uh, battery charging port. So that's something to be aware of. Usually your green middle pin is actually the earth to the main supply. And I think first thing I'll do is I'll check voltage to ground, right? And we'll see what the voltage is not zero. Now, because this is powered on, this test that I'm doing may not be telling us much. Oh, come on, go back. All right, and check your ohms to here. So this is not grounded something to be aware of this is not mains earth it's not listed as mains earth uh so if you need a mains earth you're gonna have to add another banana plug or you would have to modify the board i'd personally recommend just adding another banana plug if you really need it let's see if this is earthed here but it looks like this negative supply here is not earthed either so it looks like it's probably just a floating power supply no connection to mains earth on this thing so Definitely something to be aware of, but at the same time, you can add that functionality yourself. Uh, put a banana plug on that connects down inside uh, to your earth wire, and then that way you can have a mains earth. This way, at least, the uh, power supply appears to be floating, So, and it beeps every time it changes, so it's kind of an annoying function. Uh, if it was more of like a subtle click, sure, but this is a power supply, like a really like a fire alarm chirp or a smoke alarm that you'd have in your house it's not really nice to listen to i'm just gonna say that oh so if you hit enter you can go through the menu buzzer turn that damn thing off oh he used the voltage switch of course and there it is the uh right in rd6012 power supply it seems to work pretty well you, you can turn that annoying buzzer off so i really don't have too many complaints here all right, so that was my review of the Raiden RD6012 power supply. If you like this video, hit like and click subscribe.